This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Mark Magnuson. Hello and welcome into Ag Matters PM on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Mark Magnuson. Today is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023, and we're so glad you could join us for today's show. And in today's episode, United States Senators from Iowa, Joni Ernst and Chuck Grassley, today hosted Senator John Bozeman from Arkansas. He's the ranking member of the Senate Agriculture Committee for Farm Bill Discussions, and those were held today in Ames. But first, let's run down the markets. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. At the end of another trading day, we are joined by Jacob Burks of agmarket.net for our closing analysis. Jacob, what did we see in the grain markets today? I saw a grain trade that was uh, dominated today by uh, the spread trade. Uh, cash markets have been you know, relatively strong. Uh, you've seen some, some extremely strong basis across uh, some part portions of the Midwest. You know, a lot of that could be attributed to, to guys not being very interested in being in the fields. And then these commercials are having, are not, not very interested in delivering corn. They're in the fields. And so I think a lot of that uh, required some of these commercials and users to, to bid up uh, for, for product. And, and I think that uh, seeing a, a nickel spread between May and July today was significant. Uh, I think you were looking at the six, seven cents between the, uh, the, the May, July and, and the soybeans as well. So it's so, uh, dominated by that type of move. I, I would assume that you had some spread trade, you know, some spec traders uh, jumping in on that as well. Uh, but, you know, you saw nickel higher in May corn and, you know, three and a half, four cents lower in, in the December corn. So uh, there was just uh, uh, that spread, that, that bull spread was really on, uh, on full force today. Jacob, in some world news, we don't necessarily know what to make of some of these reports, but we have the Black Sea grain deal in place and that has been in place and they've had to extend it a couple of times. But now Russia kind of making some noise that it's not going to extend that deal again. If that were to happen, what would that mean for us? Would we see some price support there? Uh, yes, yes, you would. I mean, first of all, uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, the, the Black Sea region, if there's no deal and, and there's not, uh, uh, you know, wheat, uh, a little bit of corn and some of the sunflower oil, you know, being exported through that general region uh, and having to be significantly moved by rail. Uh, I think that there are measures to make sure that happens. Uh, but, you know, you start to see other countries around that Pripyat of Ukraine say, hang on, time out, You're, we're ruining our domestic prices, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, by flooding that area with, with their grain. So, yes, that would affect it uh, in general. Uh, the, the backlash of what uh, sanctions and what would happen to Russia would be the other part of the other side of that coin that you'd have to, to analyze to see, you know, how that truly affects, but it, it is a big deal. I mean, Russia says, you know, since the, uh, the last time that they, they extended, Hey, we're, we're, we're done extending it. And, uh, you know, it really makes uh, a lot of this springtime, uh, you know, uh, you know, looks at what, what's going to take place in, in these, in this, this war front and, and what we're going to end up seeing from, uh, you know, from everything, I, it, it just puts a lot of question marks left in as far as this, you know, Ukraine-Russia situation. On the other side of the ag marketplace, what was the story with livestock today, Jacob? Uh, same same story, uh, just a different day. We saw cattle continuing to rally. The, the big significant jump here was the April cattle being $2 higher. Uh, I think we settled 197 higher. So, you know, we keep, you know when, when you're in record areas, you continue to say every day it's, a, it's another record. So uh, hogs, same type of story, negatives, uh, negative across the board. Uh, this is a month full of just you know some ugly prices with a little bit of choppiness in there, and uh, they're just having a hard time finding foot. It's hard hard time you know with the amount of the, you know supply that we have on hand. Uh, we need to see some significant move in demand, and hopefully this picnic time uh, will, will will spark it at some point. But right now we just haven't seen that big move. And is that really what it boils down to for hogs, Jacob? We still seeing some pretty good prices. Just need that demand to pick up because it's been many weeks now that we keep coming back to the same point of just not a great day for hogs. I think in general, you look at uh, uh, there was a lot of anticipation. We saw the big move, you know, you know, throughout the, the end of last year when Russia was or when China was going to come out of uh, their COVID uh, situation and, and and policies. From there, uh, we just haven't seen that demand pick up. 
uh, you know, their, their herds have been built up. Yes, they have some ASF, uh, thinking that maybe the export uh, number would pick up uh, domestic, you know, from, from the United States to China. And it just, it just hasn't happened. Uh, you, but, you know, we've built so, so much supply in, in that anticipation, and, and we just have a little bit of a burdensome uh, storage uh, of pork, and, and we're not chewing through that at, at a fast enough pace. And Jacob, before we wrap up, we've got a lot of boots on the ground with the agmarket.net team in different parts of the upper Midwest. In your area, could you remind our listeners where you're located? Have you heard of, have you seen any guys out planting already and are, are farmers getting ready to plant in your area? Yeah, I'm right here in the southwest corner of Wisconsin, uh, you know, 30 or 20 miles from the, from the Mississippi River. Yeah, there, there's dirt flying everywhere. Uh, I did talk to some guys that were putting some beans in the ground today. Uh, you know, in our tri-state area, if you will, there's uh, there's a lot of corn and beans going in. Some of the larger farmers have both going in, uh, just to the you know southern northern Illinois, right south of me here. So yeah, there is. Uh, you know, I can speak for the guy that I was talking to here in North Dakota today, and I saw a lot of visuals. I mean, if you've seen on Twitter or anything, but there's also a lot of flooding up there in that area as you go as you go north. But uh, uh, there's a lot of guys that are scared to you know put some some corn around north of me here just because corn or beans. Just because the weather forecast, uh, you know, coming in the next week may be a little bit cooler than what they want to have corn setting out there in the ground. Jacob, thank you for the analysis. As always, how can our viewers get in touch for more information? Hey, just simply look us up at agmarket.net. Uh, take a 30-day free trial of our intel. We'd love to chat with you. He's Jacob Burks of agmarket.net, our guest today. Jacob, thank you for the time, and we'll speak again soon. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Look forward to it. That was Jacob Burks with agmarket.net. Let's turn our attention now to the closing numbers, courtesy of the folks at Bar Chart. May corn is up five even at 656 even. New crop December corn down three and three quarters at 555 and a half. May soybeans up seven even at 1504 and a quarter. New crop November soybeans down six and a half at 1307 and three quarters. May soybean meal up two dollars and forty cents at 46020. May soybean oil down 89 cents at 54 even. Chicago wheat up three even at 687 even. Minneapolis wheat down three even at 860 even. Kansas hard red wheat down three and three quarters at 846 and a quarter. July oats down four even at 331 and three quarters. On the Merck, April live cattle up $1.97 at 174.27. April feeder cattle up 12 cents at 202.22. April lean hogs down 75 cents at 72.30. April pork cutout down 85 cents at 77.75. Class three milk down one cent at 18.61. And that's been a check of the Ag Market Recap here on Ag Matters PM. We're going to go ahead now and take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. And when we come back, I will present video from Farm Bill Roundtable discussions today in Ames with U.S. Senators Joni Ernst, Chuck Grassley, and John Bozeman. This is AMPM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Mark Magnuson. Today, I traveled to Ames for a roundtable discussion at Iowa State University Research Park hosted by Pivot Bio. United States Senators from Iowa, Joni Ernst and Chuck Grassley, hosted ranking member of the Senate Ag Committee, John Bozeman of Arkansas. Iowa Secretary of Agriculture, Mike Nag, led the discussions, and many agriculture and commodity groups were in attendance to provide their hopes of what issues they would like to see addressed in the Farm Bill. So it's important that we have a voice, that we have opinions about a lot of things in the Farm Bill. And I want you all to also acknowledge and remember that as Iowans, we have a very, very important and, and loud voice when it comes to our congressional delegation on the creation, the development of the Farm Bill and the passage of the Farm Bill. We've got Senators Grassley and Ernst both on the Senate Agriculture Committee. We have, we have, we have Representative Spinstra and Nunn both on the House Agriculture Committee. Ashley Hinson and Bill Meeks are going to do their part as well in certain important roles. But that gives us a unique opportunity uh, to make sure that we're having Iowa's voice heard. And today we're thrilled to be able to uh, welcome Senator John Bozeman from uh, Arkansas to the state as well, the lead Republican on the 
U.S. Senate Agriculture Committee. Thank you for being here and for the time that you're going to spend not just with this group today, but also you've got uh, quite a schedule here over the next uh, couple hours. When it comes to the farm safety net, what are the important priorities that senators should be looking at in this, uh, this next farm bill? Yep, very good. Thanks, Secretary Nag. I appreciate all of you being here. That is, I need to learn from past experience. This mic is loud. <laughs> um, the, everybody in the room, everybody in the state, in the country understands that the cost of, in, the, the cost of living, inflation, has just absolutely uh, taken off. The, the challenge that that presents to agriculture is it is disproportionately uh, increased in the agriculture sector. So my personal situation is that the the inflation rate, although you know calculated at six eight percent, um, when it comes to inputs and pricing for agriculture, um, the highest non-land cost to doing per, to to doing business within the state is fertilizer, and that segment alone over the last year and a half has increased two to three hundred percent in cost. And what that, what ultimately what that translates to is this upcoming crop is going to be the most expensive crop that, that we have ever put in. My personal situation is that that equates to about eight hundred dollars an acre in in inputs and and we, we I've talked with members across the state. Some of them are over $1,000 an acre to put a corn crop in this year. It's, it's absolutely astronomical. All that, all that does is increase the risk. We're growing a commodity, and, and when that price correction happens, we all know it will happen. That, that's going to create a, a real situation for, for food security, national security moving forward. Title I is an important aspect to ma maintaining um, that security for our national standings uh, moving forward. So with our current farm bill, you know, the, the ARC and PLC programs, um, they've worked well. Uh, we, we want to see those continue, although we do want to increase those reference prices. It's been a long time since those reference prices have hit and paid, and with this, with this increased cost of doing business, um, we need to make sure that those tools are appropriately funded and viable for, for production agriculture moving forward. Um, and when it comes to the, the primary source for determining more accurate county yields in that conversation, um, using, using RMA as long as, it's, uh, as long as it's protected from FOIA. Um, I, think that's, I think that's an important aspect. The opportunity for farmers to reelect or re-enroll annually, um, I think, I think is a, an important tool as, as we have these elevated risks in production agriculture right now. That ability to switch between ARC and PLC in a more frequent fashion is, is uh, an important uh, risk management tool that farmers can use as situations change from year to year. Um, the, uh, the other part of, of uh, Title I, the, the base acre conversation, making sure that former generic base acres being redistributed to update uh, base on the, on the same farms is an important aspect. Increasing loan rates to make sure that they're in line. Um, so, so all these tools, Title I, it's, it's, working, it's working well. Um, let's make sure that it's, it's modernized, better funded, and it really hits those points for for where we're at today, and we are generally we are just absolutely in a different place where we were the last time this farm bill was written. Um, I'll I'll answer any questions, but but <laughs> Mike's probably going to give me the hook soon. Can you respond to me? Okay. Thanks, Brent. Comments, Senator Ernst. I just want to say thank you very much uh, for Senator Bozeman taking the time to visit us here in Iowa and do a deep dive 
uh, throughout the day in a number of our different ag sectors. And we're just very excited to have you here and, and working with Senator Grassley on uh, the second farm bill that I've been engaged in now in the United States Senate. And it's a great opportunity to really showcase Iowa through good policy in the farm bill. And we've done a number of roundtable activities across the state of Iowa, focusing on the different uh, titles within the Farm Bill, and we're getting great feedback from Iowans on what they want to see included in the Farm Bill, as well as what they don't want to see included in the Farm Bill. And that's where we do have to be very cautious about some of the, the policy that's being promoted by this administration that would tie uh, certain things like crop insurance to ESG requirements, um, social justice, and, and things of that nature. While that's a great topic for another day, we don't want to see it uh, as a mandatory requirement within the farm bill. Our job is, uh, as Iowans, as farm farmers, producers, uh, livestock uh, growers, is to produce the food and the fuel for not only our state and our nation, but uh, to assist other countries. So I think we've got a, a great trajectory. I know that uh, Senator Bozeman is a phenomenal leader. Uh, thank you again. He's got such a great relationship with uh, Chairwoman Debbie Stabenow of Michigan. And I feel that we'll be very successful in this upcoming farm <coughs> bill and working towards what Iowans really want to see in the bill. So thanks for all the comments today and the continued support that, that you give to us through comments that come in through my staff and, and through the roundtables that we've done. Uh, just guaranteed we're listening to your concerns and we want to make sure we're able to include those in the farm bill. So thanks again, uh, John, for being here with us. Of course, I'd say the same thing. Thank you for being there. This will probably be my eighth uh, farm bill that I've been involved in. And I thank you for taking your time to file. Thanks to bio. And always, uh, when we talk about the Farm Bill, there's no issue in the Congress of the United States that's not much more bipartisan, very bipartisan. In fact, it wouldn't even get done if it wasn't bipartisan. And also, a, a great cooperation between city legislators and farmers, between the food stamp part of the bill and the uh, agriculture part of the bill. The 900 pound gorilla, when you talk to the 86,000 family farmers in Iowa, is always the safety net. And of course, crop insurance is at the top of that, uh, maintaining that. But you can see from the discussion we've had here that there isn't just one title to the Farm Bill, that there's eight, nine, or I don't know how many, nine, ten, there is. And uh, they're all significant and they've all been voiced here. So we appreciate very much your coming to uh, participate and listen to Iowans. After the roundtable discussion with various ag groups, Senators Ernst, Grassley, and Bozeman then took questions from the media. Senator John Bozeman was asked about whether the Farm Bill will be able to be passed on time. I'm optimistic. Farm Bills, again, aren't about Democrats and Republicans. They're about regions of the country. They're about different commodities and things like that. Uh, so we're working really hard, uh, Democrats and Republicans working together. I think that Congress realizes that, that for our farm communities, a difficult time, the input costs are so high, commodity prices have gone up, they've come back down a little bit, and so as a result, uh, as they make their plans going forward, they need this five-year contract. They need to be able to know uh, what they can count on as they plan, as they talk to their bankers, you know, getting the loans and things. And then, too, the lenders need, need also to be assured us that they have a five-year program that will actually take care of them. Put the safety nets in place that are so, so very important as they go forward. Senator Chuck Grassley was asked what he would like to see prioritized with regards to trade and trade deals. Well, of course, the, the foreign marketing service appropriation has not been increased the way it should be to keep up so we can promote our products overseas. That's uh, one thing in the Farm Bill. The other thing I'm related to the Farm Bill is that this administration doesn't even like to use the word free trade. They don't like to negotiate a tariff style and they're worried about negotiating a lot of other things. So we really aren't getting any trade agreements in the first two years of this administration 
and I don't quite frankly see that we're going to see any more free trade agreements uh, in, in the next uh, two years of this administration. And uh, Mexico is a perfect example that we've been talking since December 2020 about GM whole corn continuing to go to Mexico, and they've been talk, talk, talk. Are they going to push, push, push through the USMCA uh, dispute resolution uh, process? Uh, they better, and they better do that right now because the 30 days of the interim beginning of that is over now, and they ought to get to it. But we got to have more negotiations on free trade, get these tariffs down, or we're not going to be able to export what we should export. Senator Bozeman also responded to a question about the Farm Bill and what key issues constituents consistently mention that they would like to be addressed as part of the Farm Bill. Well, I think one of the major theme that comes out is making sure that the safety nets are in place, crop insurance, ARC, PLC, these are the programs that farmers depend on uh, so that they'll have a floor so that they can go to the bank and get their loans. Also, conservation is really important in those titles. Uh, we hear, hear a lot about the agriculture titles, making sure that we are in a position to, to prevent a pandemic from happening, from the livestock, those kind of things. So those are the common things throughout the country, not only in Iowa. Senator Joni Ernst was asked about E15 sales and whether E15 should be available at the pump year-round. I would say that a lot of uh, what we deal with when it comes to biofuels goes through the EPW committee and Senator Grassley and I are very supportive of E15 year round and of course we'd love to see the administration act on that, do it permanently rather than us relying on emergency waivers every single year. Um, there's nothing in the bill that would prohibit people from owning electric vehicles, that is a personal choice. Um, I don't believe the federal government should be subsidizing electric vehicles, especially when so many of those components actually come from China that involve child and slave labor. That was United States Senators from Iowa, Joni Ernst and Chuck Grassley, along with Senator John Bozeman from Arkansas. Let's turn our attention now to the Ag Weather Outlook. Well, a sunny and warm day today here in the state of Iowa. In fact, it is sunny and windy almost across the state. And there are some warnings, some of those red flag warnings for fires in localized areas based on the sunny and windy conditions. Tonight, clear and breezy, not as cold as it has been during the overnight hours in recent weeks, feeling pretty pleasant during the evening hours tonight. And tomorrow, temps will remain high. Sunny and windy conditions will persist. Let's turn our attention now to the National Weather Service and what's in store for the next 24 hours. As you can see from the National Weather Service, sunny and windy today around the state of Iowa, a red flag warning for most of the state with the potential for fires with the warm and windy conditions. High temperatures today expected in the 82 to 86 range. Tonight, clear and breezy. Low temperatures not that cool with lows in the 53 to 58 range. Tomorrow, sunny and windy once again. Temperatures will remain high with high temperatures 80 to 84. Turning now to our affiliate weather map and looking at tomorrow's forecast, Cherokee 83, sunny and breezy for tomorrow. Shenandoah, sunny and breezy with an expected high of 84. Des Moines, sunny and breezy, 82 the high. Albia, sunny and breezy with a high around 80. Waterloo, also sunny and windy with a high around 80 degrees. And Clinton, sunny and breezy, a high tomorrow around 83. For a more detailed forecast in your part of the state, make sure and check with your local Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network affiliate. And that's been a check of the Ag Weather Outlook. That also brings us to the end of this episode of Ag Matters PM. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and LinkedIn. And you can find our video content and previous episodes of AMPM on our YouTube channel. Don't forget our free twice-daily market podcast, on Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. From the IARN studios in Des Moines, I'm Mark Magnuson. On behalf of Riley Smith and Dustin Huffman, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.